So I'm one of the senior mortgage brokers. There's a couple of us here and I'm one of the senior ones and we help clients finance their dreams, whether that's a new investment purchase or whether that is a current home loan that they've got that we try and put into some more cost-effective rates for them. I became a broker about 20 years ago and what made me become a broker was I've always been good with numbers. Um, numbers have always come fairly natural to me. I became a broker about 20 years ago and, and what made me become a broker was actually wanting to help clients. Um, I, I, I love helping people and, and helping put people in better scenarios and, and the penny dropped for me about 20 years ago when I was a bank manager and I helped a mortgage broker put a loan together for the client and, and I, the, the, the warmth and, and amazement I got out of, of, of achieving that um, I went out the next day and become a broker. Fantastic and love it. Biggest challenges in today's market is, is definitely interest rate and, and just clients concerned. So there's a lot of negativity around interest rates and the impact that that has on people. Um, but it's a very short, narrow-minded aspect at the moment. So um, that's, that's a big challenge is actually going through and talking about clients' perceptions and then showing them what reality actually looks like. That's an easy answer because it's talking to other doctors. What, what doctors are no different to everybody else that everybody's scenario is a little bit unique and what fits for some doctors isn't gonna fit for another doctor. So talking to your colleagues is fantastic, but just because your colleague did one thing doesn't mean you've gotta do the same thing, and it doesn't mean it fits for you. So it, talking to others and finding out what they've done is fantastic, but then getting help and getting professional advice, and that professional advice is gonna look at your specific individual circumstance, that's the difference. Two of the biggest impacts for somebody to, to help grow their wealth and, and move into further property investment is, is equity and borrowing capacity. They're, they're the, the main two things that a lender's gonna look at, and more than likely for a doctor, they're gonna have a very good income stream, which is fantastic. So that's, they're, they're ahead of most people straight away because they do have a very good income, or they more than likely will grow into a very good income as they go through in their profession. And the next impact is, is equity. Now, that equity could come from savings that they've got that they that they've haven't made their first purchase yet so they've just been growing their savings or that equity could come from their own house that they own home that they already own or that could be another investment property that they own so from a from a borrowing perspective and a lender's guidelines it's it's those two things are the biggest impacts on on giving somebody the ability to go and make that next purchase yeah so there, there's there's two main debts for everybody in the world and and it doesn't matter if you're a doctor or not that it's it's good debt and bad debt, and, and good debt is investment debt. Now this isn't tax advice, but good debt is something where you get to be able to claim tax benefits from. So investments debt, investment debt is a good debt because you should be able to then claim that against your tax, which therefore helps reduce your tax. Bad debt is personal debt that you have no tax deductibility benefits out of whatsoever. So you know that good debt for the investment, we get to claim stuff, we get to save on our tax, Bad debt, we don't get that at all. It's, you know, a bad debt is, is your own mortgage on your own house. A bad debt is your you know, personal loan that you have in your own name. Um, good debts, you know, investment property debt, investment portfolio debt, um, you know, potentially cars and business names and variable other aspects where that becomes a good debt. Now that, that's where you wanna make sure you get professional advice for it, but, but debt isn't a bad thing as long as it's the right level of debt or as long as it's the right type of debt. Yeah, so credit score is, is probably another big impact for, for someone as far as from a lending perspective to, to, to work on how much a lender is going to lend them. And your credit score, although you mightn't realise it, is, is quite a big impact on that. Um, things that can impact your credit score, overdue payments. Um, overdue payments is a fairly simple and easy one, but even something as far as constantly applying for credit. And that application for credit could be personal credit, could be business credit, could be buy now, pay later accounts that are, that are very fluent in today's market. All of those different times when somebody applies for credit, it effectively goes in a centralized area, which is where somebody's credit score is. And, and there's a number that gets derived from that. And then most lenders would look at that number and they'll be able to then base that of whether you're a good credit risk or a bad credit risk. Now, somebody with a poor credit score can still get finance, it's generally speaking just going to be at a higher level of interest rate because the lender looks at that and goes, well, you know, you've potentially had a bad rating in the past, so they're going to take a punt on you and still give you some money, but more than likely they're going to charge you a higher level of interest rate for it. Now, somebody needs it perfectly today, and if you have a bad credit file today, it doesn't mean you can't get finance or it may, doesn't mean you get crappy interest rates from here on in. It just means that potentially there's a process we would then help you go through to, to help go from that 
bad area to get you back into more everyday regular interest rates and environments. What I love about my job is, is helping people and, and, and what I really enjoy seeing is that final end result, um, whether that's buying a first home or buying a fifth investment property. Um, I personally get the same achievement out of it, but even a, a factor as far as looking at somebody's personal circumstances and being able to put them in a better position. So for example, refinancing somebody's current home, potentially we can put them into a better, more cost-effective option for them today, which is gonna allow them a couple of different variables. They can either free up some cash flow, if cash flow is an issue for them today, or what's even fantastic and, and much better is, is that savings we've been able to get by refinancing their mortgage into more cost-effective loans. Potentially that savings buys them into their next investment property. You know, they can potentially move into that next investment purchase without or with minimal out-of-pocket expenses because we've now saved them some great savings over here to use those savings to move towards the next investment. I love it. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, so a, a recent really good success story we've had with a client is, has been where we've been able to save them and, and it sounds like a lot of money and it's not a made-up number. We've been able to save them more than $25,000 a year in interest charges. So interest rates have gone up of late over the last kind of 12 months. It has an impact on cash flow. So we've been able to have some great success with a client recently where we saved the client basically 25 grand a year worth of interest charges. Um, that's, that's more than $2,000 a month. That's a massive impact. Now, as, as we mentioned there, we've got an option there that says, well, if we've now saved some money on cash flow, if cash flow is tight, fantastic, that's great. Potentially, we can then use that savings to go towards that next property purchase. Yeah, so I like to tailor a specific scenario for every individual person. Um, it, it, there's not a one size fits all in finance. We have access to more than 90 different financial lenders. That's a crazy amount of lenders. There's thousands of different loan options in those 90 different lenders. What I like to do is, is talk to my client, understand what my client actually wants and needs, and that makes me then be able to narrow the field down significantly. So the the very individualized scenario for everybody is, is very adamant in a finance world because there are so many different options. So um, getting specific advice for your specific needs, not listening what another person did, that's the, that's the biggest thing to do is get personal advice about your own scenario. I love dealing with new doctors. Um, new doctors is a couple of different things depending on their background and depending on when we see them. So a new doctor could be making sure we can give them the correct financial education from day one so they can make that purchase at a much sooner rate rather than they kind of fumble through the first few years, maybe get some poor advice, maybe get no advice, maybe build up too much personal debt. Um, if we can start to educate that person from a much earlier age, it, it makes their job easier. Uh, and again, I love doing that. Um, talking to a new doctor that potentially already has some personal debt, it's a matter of then showing them how to prioritise moving forward as far as savings, as far as debt reduction, to help them get into that next purchase. We, we've just recently helped a, a young doctor get into his first home. And part of that strategy was a little bit of help from the bank of mum and dad, but it was also a little bit of help around maximising his current income and minimising his current debts personally that he had. And, and we've been able to get him into a brand new home for himself probably 12 months, 18 months earlier than what he originally expected. Um, I, I love that, that's fantastic. You know, we, I can see the difference we're gonna make in him, not only today, but now with that education he's got, as soon as he's ready and has the ability to buy that next investment property, he's gonna be jumping on the phone to us saying, yes, please, I'm ready to go again. I love that, it's fantastic. Helping, helping a young doctor as, as soon as possible is, is amazing um, because it gives us the ability to help educate them. And if we can help educate them from as early as possible, it, it helps them be able to drive themselves into the right scenario. I mean, if they're a young doctor, they've probably seen plenty of other doctors that are around and they may be in their late 40s and their early 50s. And as they would potentially stand around and talk to other doctors, they'll see that scenario. And maybe the other doctor's got you know, a beautiful big home, more than likely might have a beautiful big mortgage to go along with it. You know, If we can help educate that doctor and get them to to understand what is a good debt and what is a bad debt as early as possible, that potentially helps them get into a better position. So by the time they're at that age as a doctor, earning some significant income, they potentially don't have that large personal debt. They might have a personal debt, but potentially it's much smaller. And at the same time, they might have a number of investments and that's where that good debt comes into it. 
and those investment income then helps derive and generate further income and helps draw that personal debt down as fast as possible. The personal debt's the stuff we want to get rid of. The investment debt is the good, step, the good debt that, that we can maintain and keep. Helping a young doctor, it's really good. Uh, it's helping, helping educate from day one is fantastic. You know, the potential doctor that's already in his you know, mid 40s, probably got wife and some kids and, and no, let's not say that, that's being very generalized. Um, helping a young doctor, is, it's fantastic to help them get that education from day one. But, but we can't forget about the doctor that's potentially in his 40s that already has his own property. And, and maybe he's doing some right things, um, but more than likely he might not be doing some right things as well. So that education piece is, is there not only for the young doctors, but for, for any doctor of any age from that perspective. So, you know, the, the, the doctor that, that's already in his mid forties that has his nice, beautiful home, potentially has a nice big mortgage to go with it because he's got a great level of income. It's about now showing that doctor and educating that doctor around the differences, again, between that bad debt and good debt. And, and how do we make, how do we potentially get into some more investment to help get into some more good debt and then utilize that investment income to help draw that bad debt down. So it's, it's you know, um, debt recycling is a big aspect. Um, debt recycling is, is changing bad debt into good debt and it's a matter of the educating the doctor. And again, every doctor is very specifically individual and, and about showing them how they can change their own circumstance. And, and effectively draw a line in the sand. You know, if, if we're at this point today and we've got this much personal debt and no good debt, how do we move that line so we can reduce the level of personal debt and grow a greater level of good debt to help that future retirement? Yeah, so helping, helping a doctor that already has a portfolio of, of maybe one or two investment properties as well as their owner-occupied property, that's a, that's a great challenge that we love to work with every day because it's a matter of then, you know, about around that education and around that good debt and bad debt and helping utilise that good debt to reduce the bad debt. And, and the way we can do that is, is, you know, I guess generally speaking, a doctor that's probably in that scenario is earning a great level of income. It's a, better, it's a matter of showing the doctor how we can utilise that debt recycling to help generate that additional income and help utilise that income to pay some debt down faster. Um, and a great example of that, we've just recently been working with a doctor whose who's main objective is to reduce his owner-occupied debt. And on our original conversation, he had not even a thought about purchasing another investment property to help with that. Um, I know from some conversations then with our sales team and, and with myself from looking at the finance perspective, we're able to show the doctor how effectively without him costing a minimal amount, I think from memory it was a hundred bucks a week out of his pocket, we can help show him how he can pay down his bad debt and pay it off in the next three years. Um, on his current scenario, it's probably going to take about six years. So. By, by introducing some good debt and further investments, we've been able to show him how we can effectively get rid of his personal debt in half the time. Uh, a great scenario that I'm working with at the moment is a doctor who's got a, a great deal of equity in a current property, a current investment property, but his number one goal is to reduce his bad debt. It's a great goal for him to have. We're able to show him how, utilizing the equity in his current property, we're able to be able to purchase another property and help increase his level of income and good debt and utilize that extra level of income to help get rid of his bad debt. And in, in fact, we've been able to, on numbers, he should be able to get rid of his, his current owner-occupied mortgage in three years. Without the current property purchase, it's probably gonna be about five or six years. So we're able to almost half the time frame to get rid of that bad debt. And in three years time, he's then gonna be effectively debt-free. The only debt he's gonna have is the good debt. A current scenario that we've been working with with a client, um, which is fantastic, his goal is to pay down his personal debt and get rid of it. So we've talked about utilising equity in a current property that he's got, a current investment property that he's got, and we've been able to show the doctor by making an additional investment purchase and utilising the equity that he's currently got, you'll actually be able to pay down his owner-occupied debt and get rid of it in about half the time. So we'll probably be able to get rid of it in about three years with the additional income, and his current process was probably going to take him five or six, five or six years before he could get to that debt. So, you know, the, the great option there as far as utilising that extra investment is, is helping on a time perspective. You know, does that mean now that he's going to get debt free earlier, does that mean potential retirement is earlier for him? Does that mean he can then see the benefit of, of more investments to help grow his wealth for that retirement when it comes down the track? But, you know, doctors are time poor, we know that, you know, by utilising those particular strategies can help 
reduce that time frame as much as possible.